Hey guys, um, so this is my update uh, for week two here at BSSM, Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. Um, I promised I would try to make a video update at least once a week uh, for my friend's family at home, so I intend to do that. I have my notes uh, here so I wouldn't forget anything, so if you see me looking down, that's what I'm doing. Um, okay, cool. So this week was really awesome. Um, second weekend, and already I can tell this is going to be like an amazing year full of lots of growth, fire. <laughs> um, I already can tell a lot of the growth is going to be painful, but most, you know, growing is, that's why they call it growing pains. Anyway, so this week we talked a lot about core values, um, which was something that I found was really important to me. Um, they discussed, um, actually, let me just kind of read to you what I wrote down. They discussed how core values um, are kind of like at, when you go bowling, you know, you have gutter guards. Right, core values kind of form the gutter guards so that are so when we shoot, they always shoot straight and kind of guide us to where we want to go to have to hit the pins. Um, I said each person has functional and aspirational core values, ones that we live by every day, the functional ones, whether they are subconscious or conscious. Sometimes we don't even know that we're functioning out of a core value. Um, they can be positive or negative, like you can function out, out of a core value of generosity, and so you always give, or you can function out of a core value of. Um, stress and that's like kind of your default and you make decisions based off of that um and then we have core values that we hope to live by and those are the aspirational ones so we're like we really admire people that um are compassionate so like we start to value um compassion and we hope that that one day we become compassionate um let's see um one of the things they asked us to do was ask the holy spirit what core values he would like us to grow in this year and that was really cool because i've never done that before um, and I'll tell you a little bit about what my core values are here in a second. Um, and then one of the activities that they had us do was they asked us if we're having a hard time thinking of what our core values are, because that takes a lot of introspection and sometimes you can't come up with an answer right away. They said to think about um, three people in your life that annoy you the most. And they said, try to think about what it is specifically about those three people that annoy you. Um, and so I'm, I'm just going to make something up. Let's say I'm picturing someone who's like super arrogant, um, and that's super annoying to me. Um, then I would realize that the opposite of that trait, which would be humility is one of my core values. And that's why I'm triggered and annoyed by them because they're violating one of my core values. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Um, so I'll share a little bit of mine. I don't need to share all of them, but, um, so some of my core values that I have are adventure. I love traveling, I love new experiences, I love taking risks. Uh, another one is generosity. Um, I always like to give, um, you know, helping people out as much as possible, um, you know, like sponsor a child sort of thing that just really moves my heart. If I have, if I have a way to um, meet someone's need, I just feel really strongly that I should do that. Um, I have a core value of authenticity, being sincere, uh, not being fake, just being, you know, genuine. Um, another one is beauty. Uh, like, I love being out in nature, um, seeing God's handiwork, his creation. Um, that's where I see beauty the most, is out in nature, but, you know, also, like, in a poem or a painting. That's why I love art um, and dancing, that sort of thing. Another core value of purity. Um, it's something, actually, I super struggled with most of my life, and I realized the reason why I struggled with it so much is because Satan was attacking that area, because he knew that that was a core value of mine, and that was a, a sure way to get me to doubt my identity and my value in Christ. Um, another one is freedom. I've, I've always <laughs> had a hard time with like following rules that don't make sense. I'm like, why is that a rule? It's stupid, you know, and like, um, or people in authority positions that abuse their, their position of authority. And it's all about like their ego and just that sort of thing. So I love freedom. I like being in control, having independence, that sort of thing. And the last one that I'll mention is structure. Um, I love to plan. I love to have things organized uh, you know, keeping record of details, like I actually really like tax season, um, because I'm a weirdo and I like going through my files and keeping lists and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> um, now some of my aspirational core values that I have, um, I felt one of the ones that God's been telling me about a lot already this year is peace. Um, I tend to be, uh, I mentioned stress earlier as a functional core values people can live by. I feel like I definitely have that tendency to be stressed. 
um, and worried and kind of like picture worst case scenarios and like plan for that. And that kind of comes from my, my core value of structure. I like to have things organized. I like to know what's coming, plan, planning ahead, planning in advance. And so when I feel like things are overwhelming or out of my control, I tend to get stressed. And so a core value that I'm aspiring towards, that I know the Holy Spirit is mentioning to me is that of peace. Um, you know, despite whether or not I'm able to structure my life or not. Uh, another one is joy. Um, definitely have felt the Lord speaking to me specifically about joy. And the last one is honor. Um, this is something I've never really thought much about, to be honest with you. I've always like, whenever I thought of the word honor, honestly, I always just, what came to mind was like Mulan, like she'll bring honor to us all, <laughs> like the whole Asian thing, like honor. And it's not really something that's like a super Western idea. Um, but it's really been cool. Like at Bethel, there's such a culture of honor like honoring each other. Um, and that's still something I'm not really like fully like, okay, how do you live in that? What does that look like? Cause it's just so new to me, but like, I've definitely felt the Lord, like, um, like whispering to me, like, Hey, I really want you to grow in this area. Um, not just giving honor, but receiving it and learning how to receive it. So that's, um, been on my heart anyways. So enough of that. Um, now I'll be honest. Um, this first couple weeks at BSSM has been rather difficult for me um, because like I said, I value structure um, and everything's been super disorganized. And I know it's not like Bethel's fault, right? With the whole pandemic thing going on and like, you know, different regulations and mandates by the county and like having to wear masks and social distancing and taking your temperature when you come in and having to change the schedule and, you know, all these things, things keep changing. So we've had to be very flexible and like, you know, ready at a moment's notice to like change the plan. And that's hard for me because I'm like, okay, I made the schedule and you know, spent all this time putting it together and now it's changed. I have to scrap that and start over. And like that stresses me out, right? So already I can see how God's been growing me from week one, like learning to find peace in the midst of there being no structure, right? So, you know, like with the homework assignments, there's been like, you know, it hasn't been clear like what they are or like when they're due or how to do them. Um, so like already I can see like God, like poking at that, like that area. And he's like saying, Hey, learn to trust me and have peace, even when you're not able to have it structured. Um, so that's the first way I've already seen, um, you know, me growing in this area. The second area that I've already seen, um, you know, a lot of my core values being pointed out and highlighted and kind of threatened is in this whole Bethel culture of the Holy Spirit and manifestations. Um, now, I grew up in a very conservative kind of upbringing in regards to the Holy Spirit. Like, you know, we believe in the Holy Spirit, obviously. Um, but the whole idea of like him coming upon people and it manifesting in physical ways is kind of like something I are, you know, I wasn't raised with and kind of honestly like was frowned upon um, as, as not being good. Right. And so I'm sure there's a lot of other people at BSSM that can relate to that or have also kind of had that upbringing. And so it's been a struggle for me, um, to kind of figure out like how I feel about all that and where I stand. And I know a lot of people that I'm friends with back at home or, you know, that come from the same background as me, they're like saying, be careful, don't let myself get led astray by these things. And they're really like, you know, test things against scripture and all this stuff. And I understand that their concern, um, I, but you know, I think they're afraid I'm going to get brainwashed or whatever. And I'm like, you know, just use your own discernment and like talk to God just because you're around something doesn't mean you have to like, just go along with, with something everyone says, like, check it out for yourself. Right. Anyways. So I realized, like, I was wondering like, what, why am I so uncomfortable with this? Like, you know, I'm saying, you know, we're in this big corporate worship environment, everyone's singing. And, you know, some people over there are like, screaming out and yelling some people over here are like falling down other people over here are like twitching and shaking um some person over here is like laying on the ground and like sobbing or like groaning or whatever and so you know we're, how i grew up like worship was very like <laughs> you kind of sit still with your hands clasped and sing or you stand up with the hymnal and like the most like the craziest thing that you can do is like maybe raise your hands as you're singing but even then you know, you feel a little uncomfortable because people might be watching you like, hey, calm down, like, don't get too excited, <laughs> you know, so, like, being in that corporate environment is very new, um, and I was wondering, like, why do I feel so uncomfortable with this, I'm like, is it just because, like, it's unfamiliar to me, 
you know, like, and so I realized as I was talking to God about it, it's like, God, I don't know why I'm so uncomfortable. Like what they're doing has nothing to do with me. So why do I care? You know? And then he told me, um, you know, that the reason why I'm so uncomfortable is because it's been violating some of my core values. And I was like, what do you mean? He's was like, well, you have, um, the core value of authenticity. And I was like, yeah. He's like, well, um, one of the reasons why you're so uncomfortable with this is because you're wondering, like, is this real or is this fake? You know, um, is it really God or that people just attention seeking or are they just being dramatic or like, you know, what's going on? And like, it's threatening my core value of authenticity and sincerity because I can't tell, like, is it authentic? Is it genuine? Right. And then another part of making me uncomfortable is like, okay, well, am I expected to do that? I don't want people to think I'm fake and that I'm not having encounters with the Holy Spirit or that I'm not a real Christian if I'm not doing those things. Right. So then it like creates this weird feeling of pressure. Like I need to like, you know, I need to like get whatever it is they're having so that I have the same experience to prove that like, I'm also spiritual, which is all nonsense, right? It's just all nonsense. It's just the devil, like being annoying and doing what he does best, like, you know, lying and accusing and all this stuff. And so I realized like, wow, you know, that makes so much sense. And then the Holy spirit went on. He's like, it also threatens your, um, your core value of structure because you know, to me, like, it's very distracting. Like when people are doing that, I'm trying to like, think about God and like focus on his presence. And there's like all this screaming and loud stuff happening. And it's like, I can't like focus because there's like all this chaos happening. And I like things to be orderly, you know? And, uh, I kind of like, it's kind of embarrassing. Like, you know, I would never want to be that person doing those things. So I feel like I'd be embarrassed. Um, you know, so then the other one he mentioned is that it threatens my core value of beauty right? Because like, to me, when I think of like God touching someone or the Holy Spirit coming upon someone, I think of like these nice warm feelings, like maybe you get warm or like you feel really happy and joyful inside. And maybe you'll have like beautiful tears and like a beautiful touching moment, right? And then what I'm seeing in these corporate worship environments, like to me, isn't, it isn't um, exhibiting like what my view of beauty is. Like someone like twitching and laying on the ground, like that's more like scary and concerning. I'm just being honest. I'm not judging anyone. I'm just going through my inner processes and like explaining where I'm at. So like, I'm not trying to offend anyone like at all. I'm just speaking from my heart and being open and vulnerable. Um, so like, if you are one of those people, please don't hear me wrong. Don't get offended. Uh, don't think that I'm coming after you. Um, but yeah, so like that violated my sense of beauty um, because that didn't look beautiful or good to me. Right. I was like, I, you know, I don't view that for me, I wouldn't feel like that's a beautiful moment with God because it's kind of scary. Um, so then, um, actually yesterday, um, at the end of the week, um, this guy, I won't tell you his name. I'll just call him Bob. Bob, he's in my revival group. He uh, came up to me and somehow we started talking about the Holy Spirit and manifestations and stuff. And he kind of highlighted something that I didn't even realize was there in me. He started talking about his experience with the spirit and how he first felt like he was filled with the Holy Spirit and um, how like God is really safe and like he's gentle and he doesn't force his way. And like, you know, when, when people are, you know, having whatever thing physically manifests to them, like they aren't out of control. Like people talk a lot about being drunk in the spirit. And he's like, it's not like when you're actually drunk, like off alcohol or like under the influence of drugs where you literally can't control your body and like you have no control over what's happening and like you know the like the that influence is taken over and like you have no ability to stop it um it's like people all you always have like he was saying like you always have control like one of the fruits of the spirit is control so he was saying like when i feel bob was saying like when i feel the spirit come upon me and i just start bursting out and like joyous laughter i can always stop like i have the control to make it stop and he's like it only, God will only come upon you in that way. Like if you allow it, like if you don't allow it, like he won't do it. Cause he's a gentleman. And he respects your boundaries. And like, as he was saying this, like I started feeling myself start to cry and I was like, Oh no, no, we're not crying in front of people. <laughs> tears. You go back, you go right back into those tear ducts, you know? And cause I realized that he was touching on my other core value of structure or not, I'm sorry, not structure of freedom that was being violated. Because like I mentioned before, like I like having control. I don't like feeling like someone's controlling me. I don't like being obligated to do things like there's a duty or like I'm enslaved or that I have no say. Like I like having freedom. And so like I had this idea that like 
the Holy Spirit might just come upon me and like, I'll just start twitching and like, uh, you know, screaming and yelling all over the place and I'll be embarrassed and it's happening to all these people and I have con no control over when it happens. And like, that scared me. And like, that felt like a violation of like my personhood and my privacy and my right to say no and my voice, you know? Um, and so he helped me to realize, let me just read my note here real quick because I don't want to mess it up. He helped me to realize that my suspicion of manifestations is because I didn't understand it and that's scary and that I'm not able to control it, like losing control of my body, losing my voice, losing the ability to say no and violate my boundaries makes me feel threatened and wanting to put up my guard. So I started to associate fear with the Holy Spirit. And that was like a huge revelation for me that like I started to associate the Holy Spirit with fear, you know, rather than what he's supposed to be. Like the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the comforter, right? That's the complete opposite of like fear. Like when you're scared, you go to your blanket or you go to your mom, like that's a source of comfort. All right. And then in order for the Holy Spirit to be a comforter, the required precondition is discomfort. Right. And like, when I realized that I was like, Oh my goodness. And I like start started like being really emotional. Cause I was like, man, I'm so sorry, God, I had this idea of you that wasn't right. Um, and then something that Jesus kind of whispered in my ear as I was, you know, contemplating all these things was that, um, well, here's the other thing, like manifestations are, you know, uniquely personal. So like God will touch different people in different ways. Right. So like if one person's like, falling out and laying on the floor in a trance like I don't need to like be like okay that's what I need to do in order to experience God right like that's just how God touches them like each person can ex encounter God differently so God like so I'm learning to be like okay God and ask him like how do you want to touch me what can be our personal thing like how can I encounter you personally for myself you know and not want what other people are having to feel like I'm also having an experience with God too um and something that God whispered to me was like Gracie some worship me through shouts and yells. Your worship is in your peace and stillness. And that really spoke to me because I remember that the peace was one of my aspirational core values that I know God's been whispering to me. It's like when you, he's like telling me like, Gracie, when you can sit still and have peace, you know, that is your worship for me. Like for that person, you know, they might be, you know, yelling and shouting, but for you, it's that inner sense of peace and stillness. And that was like, super relieving that I don't have to like have any of that stuff happen to me in order to have an encounter with God. Um, yeah. Um, so what else did I have here? Um, speaking of peace, um, the other thing that um, I heard Bill Johnson say um, was that if we want the peace that surpasses understanding, sometimes we have to give up the right to always understand. Right. And that comes back to my sense of structure, me wanting to uh, always plan and understand everything's like, look, sometimes you have to give that up to have peace. Right. And I realized I actually. OK, so I don't know if you guys know about the TV series called The Chosen. Oh, it's so good. Um, it's a live a live action. Is that what you call it? Like real people. It's not a cartoon um, like dramatization of like the life of Jesus. And it's so good. It's actually really well done. It's not like these normally like super cheesy, like Jesus films that are like, okay, that's a low budget film. It's actually really good. I watched it yesterday, um, episode six, and Jesus was healing a paralyzed man. And like one of the Pharisees was like, you know, super offended and like saying, who are you to, you know, you can't be God. Like, who are you to say that you're God? And like basically being super offended and like judging him. And I realized, like, I thought the Holy Spirit was which means like, look, the Pharisees were offended by the manifestations of Jesus during that time because they didn't understand either. And like, man, it was like a dagger to my chest because I realized that I was being like that Pharisee in the sense that like, I was judging act moves of God because it didn't fit like what I expect or like what I think that God is supposed to do or supposed to be doing. Um, just like the Pharisees were like, that isn't how we expected the Messiah to come. This isn't what we wanted him to do or like how we thought that God would move. And I was just like, Oh my goodness, like God, I don't want to be like the Pharisee who's offended by your move by how you move because we don't understand it. And I was just like, Oh man. <laughs> And then I realized also, there's so many things that I'm realizing, guys, like I'm writing these all down because they're gold, um, is that like, when there's a lot of hate on something, like there was a lot of hate on Jesus, like all the Pharisees were like on him, right? And a lot of churches get a lot of different hate too, or like, 
um, like Bill Johnson and Chris Valentin, they get told a gazillion times a day that they're false prophets and stuff. And I realized like the greater the hate, usually the greater the anointing, right? Like Jesus had a ton of hate and that was because he was super anointed, right? Like, honestly, like if you're doing something for God and you're not getting much pushback, you're not getting much hate or haters, like you're probably honestly not doing anything worth like standing up against like the devil's probably like hmm, well they're not really doing a lot so we're just gonna let them be like right like the, the more opposition you come into is a higher indicator that like what you're actually doing is from god um and so like at bethel for example like i may not understand everything that's going on in the culture and like what you know is going on in lucy's mind over there what's happening to susan and like why karen's on the floor but like i can't deny that like when i come to come to the place or when I, i'm there that i just feel like so much peace I feel God's heart. Like I see people's lives changed. I see their love and compassion for people. And so I can't deny that like God is here, right? Like you judge a tree by its fruits, right? And if the fruits are good, the tree is good. And so I'm like, okay, am I going to put God in a box or am I going to be open to what he's doing? Um, right. And, um, let's see. So I've decided to start trying to look at things a different way. Um, because all, I've been looking at all these manifestations through like them violating my core values. So I have this friend who's my mentor and he's amazing. And I've been talking to him like every single day about everything I've been experiencing and going through. And there's been some rough moments, let me tell you. Um, during our first revival group, I almost had to walk out the door because it was just like too much. And I was like, this is too much to handle. I don't know if I can sit here in this room. And so I processed it with him and uh, he was like, Gracie, um, learn to see these things through the lens of your core values rather than them being violated he's like i was like what are you talking about he's like okay you have a core value of beauty all right he's like part of god's mystery is part of his beauty like right like a lot of god's mystery is what makes him beautiful um and so like if we had it all figured out you know and we knew everything he was going to do like through my structure then there would be no mystery and like there wouldn't be like this beautiful journey and i was like wow that's really good and then he was like um he also told me that like my discomfort that I'm feeling is an opportunity to have inner structure amidst external disarray. And I need to learn to let the atmosphere within me be stronger than the atmosphere around me again, which comes to my aspirational core value of peace. And I was just like, wow. And like, that's useful in any situation. Like, you know, if during the pandemic or during the forest fires that are like taking over all of California or during this crazy election or, you know, the, what were the killer mosquitoes that came or those bees? I can't remember what 2020 is doing, but like having that inner peace, regardless of like whatever chaos is happening. Right. Um, and I was like, wow, that's so awesome to look at things through my core values rather than them through them being violated. Right. Um, so anyways, uh, I don't know how long I've been talking for, but, um, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been good. Um, hope this was helpful to some of you guys, and I hope to give an update soon about week three that is coming up.